What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. My name is Splattercat and I'm happy to have you here today as we hang out for a little bit and explore the deep blue sea. So today, we're going to make the stasis rifle today. We're going to do our best to apply it to as many creatures as possible. Unfortunately, I don't think there's a whole lot of animals around here. I've only seen like one of those little clawy things over there and I didn't really want to go any deeper down into that sea cave because honestly I'm afraid of the dark and I don't have my blankie with me. So until I have that, unfortunately, the adventure is cancelled. That's it. Adventure off. Adventure cancelled. Stasis rifle requires a battery and two copper. We have that actually. We have these things. I'm always amazed when I play video games and I like have the stuff that I need in order to craft something like the first time around. Let's try this. Stasis rifle! There it is. We got the stasis rifle. Ooh, hello. What's going on, stasis rifle? So how does this... It just made a noise. I didn't even do that. It's talking to us. It's like, hello, Splattercat. I'm like, hi? I'm your new gun. Never betray me. I'm like, I, well, I, I wasn't planning on betraying you, but just as a point here, I like... <laughs> Aw, take the gun back out. That was awesome. I want you to sit inside the cab of the ship with the gun cocked up like you're riding shotgun in an old, like, I don't know. Like one of those Wells Fargo wagons or whatever. Riding shotgun into the deep blue sea. We need to find something to shoot with this thing. So let's go find ourselves an animal and we're going to shoot it. Because obviously that's what being human is all about. We create new guns and then we shoot stuff with them. Ooh, there's gold right there. Anybody want some gold? Alright, I'm going to pop out... I don't feel like anything... Oh, shit. What? What does that do? I wonder if it just, like, holds everything in place that's inside of the globe? Either way, hold on. I gotta grab this gold over here. There we go. We got, I like how it makes, like, a little chimey happy noise when you find gold. It's like, hooray for you. You have found the gold. Does it make you feel more bold? I'm like, no, it makes me feel more cold, actually. And I'm like, yeah, so we've been told. Does the stasis field just stay... Hold on. So, if I wanted a stasis field... Here, you hold still. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay, it makes more sense. Oh, yeah, it freezes them in place. Look at that. Huh. It's a Reginald. Come forth, Reginald. Join me inside my ship, shall you? For dinner? Hmm, to serve fish, indeed. Let's go back to the ship. So now we have the stasis rifle. I'm about to go fight something right now. We need to go fight with some of those alligators. Either way, we have the advantage, and I'm going to press it. I'm going to press it like an exposed bruise on a best friend. I don't know, did you guys do that with your best friends? I don't know, when I was a kid, if you had a best friend and he had a bruise and you saw it, you had to push it. Like when he wasn't paying attention, you'd be like, ah, and he'd be like, ah, bastard. He'd be upset with you, but it was always funny. Then again, we were assholes. I've always talked about the games that we played, like, in high school and junior high. I should probably go back through them, but I don't know. Does anybody want to hear this talk again? Sometimes I feel like a broken record. Like, I tell some of the same stories over and over and over again. I figure we'll probably do our best to get up and off the bottom here. Yeah, that seems all right. I have no idea what direction we're going in, so we should probably come up with some kind of... I think that's back to our old ship right there, our little escape pod. And so I think our plan right now might be... Oh, we're not actually that far out. We're we're pretty close. We're not nearly so far out as I had hoped we would be. Chia. Anyways. That's actually... I get that all the time, but like... Sometimes it was a lot worse. I'll, I'll put it like this. It was a lot worse in the 90s being Californian. Because then everybody just thought you were like a surfer or something. And I assume that it was even worse like back in the 80s or whatever. It's been getting better. Like people like know the difference between like NorCal and SoCal now. Like, two different places. Like, SoCal, even so, like, eh, I know a lot of people from Southern California because of college, and, like, none of them surf. Not, like, a single one of them. I don't know. Not a lot of surfer. I mean, I see people out, like, at Marin every now and again when I go through the Marin headlands or whatever. I see people out there, like, kite surfing and all kinds of stuff, so I assume there are people. Maybe it's just because, like, I don't do it. I don't meet people who do it. And so that might be the problem that we're running into. I love those little fans right there. Those things are gorgeous. Absolutely. I wonder if they spread out like that to aid in photosynthesis. Like they make themselves that large simply to just like process the minimal amount of light that's coming down through the water. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I always wish that I had a little bit more time to study oceanography when I was in college. And I never really did. I had sedimentary classes. So wait, how do we know? How do we know what the damage is to the hull? So it can't go down lower than 100 meters? It seems like kind of a waste that we would have a sub so big that can't go down lower than 100 meters. Let's get this thing as close to 100 then as we can. I actually think our depth meter might not actually be accurate because it's calling it a little bit early. I don't know if it's doing that just to try and like be safe and keep us from like detonating ourselves underwater. But... 
I guess this is about as deep as we can set up. I guess we'll go out. Let me catch some more fish and stuff. I'm going to try and catch some of those spade fish out there because we need some more food. I am constantly feeding myself in this game. Like, seriously, I feel like such a glutton whenever I play. Oh, there's a victim. Yeah, we got you. Oh, you're inside my stasis trap now, and I shall knife you. Can you fight me? He looks, he looks really stunned. That's exactly how I look when I hit that hash. I'd be like, hmm. I stopped, though. I don't use any more anything, really. It's because, like, YouTube takes, like, too much work, and I'm just totally unmotivated when I'm domed, and therefore, I no longer get to have this look on my face anymore. Did we kill him? Is he... I don't think he's quite destroyed just yet. I might stasis him one more time to be safe. Or you! Ha! There we go. I like this. Have I mentioned that I like this? Do we get anything from him? He's kind of cute. I sort of feel guilty. I mean, he's not super cute. The teeth are definitely a little bit of a turnoff. I feel like if he had marshmallows in there, he'd be a little bit more tolerable, but I could take it for right now. I'm going to catch some spade fish while we're here because they're delicious and they fill up all of our meters simultaneously. You there. He's going to be really angry once he gets out of this digital net, isn't he? Yeah, that's what I figured. No, I missed. How are you going to miss? He's right in front of you, man. Hood life. Uh. Yeah. It's time for some Rowenge. What you really know about knives? Nothing. He's like, well, I've got a mouthful of them. Yeah, see, I'm cutting on your eyeball right now. Look at that. How does that feel? Does it feel terrible? I'm cutting. I think we murdered him. I think he might be dead. He made a noise. Yeah, he's dead. He's dead as hell. Oops, let's go get some air. How about that? Anybody want to go out to the air bar and get ourselves some air? That sounds good. You ever think about the fact, like, if we ever meet aliens, that they might not breathe oxygen like we do? And so if we're ever going to coexist, we're going to have to set up, like, communal areas where both of... Essentially, we're either going to have to have neutral areas where neither the thing we breathe exists. We're going to have to have one-sided locations where it'll have oxygen, but for courtesy's sake, like, at the front door, there will be, like, recharging stations for whatever type of, like, pack or, you know, thing that they breathe out of. These are complicated things we need to think about with our infrastructure, and I feel like if the aliens get to us before we get to them... It would behoove us to make them as happy as possible. Now, I'm not talking about sexual favors or anything, although if it keeps them from blowing up the planet, sure, why not? I mean, sometimes you got to take one for the team. But, how many spade fish do I have? A couple? Well, hell, let's eat some spade fish then. The cooked peeper? Hell yeah, I didn't know we had a cooked peeper on us. Well, shit, take that too. But yeah, I, always, I think about that a lot. Is it weird that I think about that a lot? I think about aliens a lot because, honestly, I think I'd be fascinated. I think it's one of those things, like, a lot of people think that I'm, like, really, really extroverted because I'm up on the internet and I make videos and I talk fast and everything. In real life, I actually don't talk hardly at all. I'm very, very introverted. I can pass, like, weeks. Usually, I have to go down to the corner store just because it's a weird thing that, like, my life has programmed me to enjoy doing. I go down to the corner store at least once a day. Like, I just, I walk to the corner store because it's, seriously, it's... I can see the corner store from my window, and I can walk to it in like eight seconds. Like, I had to make a soda run yesterday, and it took me all of like four minutes to go to the corner store, grab a soda, and come back. So, like, going to the corner store is like a weird part of my social routine. I'll add that in, is that like, I have to go outside to this, the corner store, otherwise I start feeling weird and jittery. But other than that, I can stay inside for long, long periods of time, aside from my random jaunts to the corner store. I don't know what we should be working on right now. We've got the stasis rifle working. I should probably take a look at the list of things that we can craft, and we can just, like, make everything that's in the game. These spade fish are remarkably amazing for keeping all of our meters filled. And so if I can farm out, like, 30 or 40 of them, that'd make me pretty happy, too. Spade fish, come here. Say, no! We don't actually chew on them, we just insert them into our... We, at this point in the future, we have, like, a little nutrient sack, and we just stick the fish inside of it, and then it, like, purees it like a blender. Just wing, like, real fast. Did you guys ever do the frog in the blender? You remember that? That was from the old days of the internet. So in the old days, I'm not talking about putting a real frog in a blender, but anyways. Oxygen. Back in the early days of the internet, there was this website where all it was was a frog, and it was in a blender, and the frog would sit there and just talk shit. That's all that the frog would do. It would sit there and just talk trash, even though it was in a blender, and it was like a test to see how long you could last before you blendered the frog. He got real obnoxious, too, if you left him there. I just realized that I have a Dreamcast. I should go get Seaman. Seaman was amazing. 
should go get that right now. It was kind of like one of those goofy concept games. In a lot of ways, I feel like Sega was like the pioneer of indie gaming. Because if you look at the titles they had on some of their like random systems, like the Sega Master System and like the Sega Dreamcast and like the Sega Saturn, they had some really, really weird experimental games that you could just not get away with during a time of streamlined Nintendo AAA titles. You just couldn't get away with it. I bet now if you supplanted Sega into nowadays, not like they're, it's not the same anymore, but I was, if the console wars took place nowadays with like the wide frame acceptance of like weird games and like niche games and things like that I bet Sega would have done a lot better nowadays than they would have done back in like the 80s and 90s so the things that we haven't crafted we haven't made a transfuser but we have to find a blueprint for that it requires unobtainium so I don't think that's in the game yet we can make a welder which requires magnesium did I ever get any of that magnesium back over here because we could take the time to fix our ship Let's see here. I don't know if you've noticed over the course of the last couple episodes, but the sea moth is actually a little bit roughed up. If we have magnesium, there's some flint, zinc, copper, salt, emery, thus proving that Splattercat can indeed read. I think I may have died when I had that cartload of... I think I did. I think I died when I had that cartload of magnesium. So we may want to go back out and see if we can reacquire it. Let's surface, and we're going to go on a magnesium quest. You should go to the store right now. You should buy a bar of magnesium and just set it on fire in your front yard. I bet you'll have fun with it. Setting magnesium on fire is one of the most fun things ever. It's one of my favorite things about being a geologist. When somebody's like, can somebody start a fire? I'm like, I have magnesium! And I get excited about it. I'm like, yes, I want to start the fire. So, I'm going to keep us slightly below the surface and just keep my eye sort of pointed towards the ground right now. I don't really know where we're headed out to. Or, oh, look. We're like moonwalking in place while our ship moves. That's a little bit odd, like, hee 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 Yeah, yeah, come on! Either way, I'm a Michael Jackson fan, I'll admit it. Michael Jackson had some amazing records, and, and he taught us all about the lovely magic of the Shure SM7B, the greatest microphone ever created by man's hands. It's a good microphone. It's a real good microphone for the cost. It's like 600 bucks, and I know what you're thinking right now, that's a lot of money for a microphone, but... Are we passing the safe depth? Okay, let's go up to the surface. I think I might have to do this all in the sea moth, which is a little bit dangerous considering the hull of the sea moth is pretty fractured and messed up. I, I'm not super excited about going out with a 40% sea moth, but I guess we'll make it work. Did I just climb on top of the steering wheel? I think that I did. I'd love to. We need to go find the island, too. There's an island back behind the ship. We'll probably do that before we end the series as well. Although I've heard that it's bathed in radiation. And so, while that might sound very, very clean and sort of squeaky and soap-like, indeed being bathed in radiation, it's it's not as awesome as it sounds. It doesn't give you... It's not the Stan Lee experience. You're not going to get, like, cool spider powers or anything. I don't know. I always thought, like, how funny it would be if Peter Parker was just, like, bit by something stupid. Like a radioactive slug. Instead of, like... Because slugs can bite. I don't know if you knew that. Like, there are varieties of slugs that are quite proficient at biting. They're pretty good at it. Go watch some of the undersea slugs. They're terrifying. They have like big fangy things with like neurotoxins that make you go paralyzed. They are horrifying little creatures. I don't think this is where I want to be. Actually, no, we know where we want to be. I'm just being dumb right now. I know where I want to be. Let's go back up to the top. And actually, it was on the other side of our beacon, as I recall. It was towards the front of the Aurora. And so we're actually going to have to do a little bit of travel time right now. But that's all right. I don't mind hanging out with all of you. I love driving places. It runs in my family. Like, my family is a big fan of the road trips. Like, you know, like, how you have those National Lampoon vacations where they load you into, like, the station wagon and you just go places? My family was a big one for that. Like, that was, that was part of my childhood, just, like, being loaded. Except for us, it was a Honda Accord. It was, like, an 85 Honda Accord. And they would just throw us in the back of the Accord, and off you would go to wherever it was. And, like, back in those days, we didn't even have Game Boys yet. We didn't have Game Boys, not even that. So, like, you had to bring, like, a book. I explicitly remember bringing books along. I'm surprised we're not getting radiation right now from the down ship. You'd also think it would sink after a while, but then again, I see, like, pictures of cruise ships and stuff, and they never seem to sink either. They just sort of, like, hang out along the surface for a while. So maybe it's actually... Act no, it's really shallow over here. I bet it's beached. So with the land over here, we are going to have to navigate very, very carefully before we're going to be able to get to the deep area, which, as I recall, was on the opposite side of our little life pod. However, while we're here, I'm going to do this on the surface because, actually, they might want to consider with this game... I don't know. All the games use Unity nowadays. Every single game. And while sometimes I love Unity, sometimes I hate it, but as of right now, I'm loving Unity for the last couple games we've played, and Stranded Deep is on Unity. They should make the water look like the water looks in Stranded Deep, but maybe that's not what they're going for. I think the game does use like a brighter palette than Stranded Deep, so maybe that was a bad idea. Never mind, don't listen to me. I'm a pleb. Don't listen to anything that I say artistically. What the hell was that over there? Did you see that? 
It looked like something beached over here. Hold on, let's go back over. Something bad might happen when I do this, but I totally saw something beach over here. Something came up and then went back down, and I want to see what it is. Damn, our ship was badass. I love it aesthetically. It looks really, really cool. Like, look at the boosters on that thing. That thing looks like, I, how fast does it come off the line? Zero to 60, let me know. How fast does it hit that dollar? It looks like there's like a floating piece right there, too. Like maybe it's a polygon or something that hasn't been finished in the texturing job or something. I don't know. I would love to be able to explore the ship someday. That sounds really, really fun. Like if you could actually get into the ports and the ship would actually function as like a makeshift dungeon that you could go through with various weapons and you could just unlock further and further areas of it almost like, I don't know, system shock style. Yeah, maybe that's what happened to the ship. See, the AI took over. The rudimentary AI took over, being especially rude and destroyed everybody. I actually think that's just a textural effect. Let's dive down below to make sure that I don't beach here. I think I'm doing something a little bit risky at the moment. I'd rather not, rather not mark up our new ride because I really do like it. This area actually looks sort of desolate. I don't think I've ever seen this biome before. It might be worth jumping out of the whip real fast and seeing what's around here because I've never been here before. So let's hit the bottom of the ocean. I'm going to leave a couple tanks behind, I think. And then let's just go have a look and see what we can find down here. Yeah, I've never seen this biome before. I don't know if this is maybe like an irradiated biome or what this is supposed to be, but it's definitely more... It's like 100% more desolate than every other place. Like, it's very, very desolate. Not a whole lot to look at, not a whole lot to see, but it's still populated with nodes, which is how I know that this is actually a designed area by comparison to some of the other desert areas that have nothing, but you know they haven't been, like, built yet because, oh, there's radiation. Does this protect us from radiation? Does this ship right here? Is it radiation shielded? Let's find out. I'd like to do a little bit of experimentation when it comes to these sorts of things. Just, like, play around with the systems that are in play. There we go. Grab our tanks back. Alright, so it was on our right. Oh no, it isn't radiation shielded. Okay, so we'll want to be careful about this then. Maybe pull it a little bit off to the left here. I need to make a compass so that I can just like know what direction that is. That little peeper's getting a little bit brave. He wants to hang out with us. Yeah, I definitely think they use a brighter color palette in this game than they used in Stranded Deep. It's supposed to be a little bit more blinding, like kind of like a watercolor, maybe artistic type thing that they got going on. I like it, though. They need to make it so that the steering wheel goes left and right and then pulls back and pushes forward when you go in different directions, just for immersion's sake, which is kind of punny when you're in an ocean game, but you know what I mean. All right, so let's see if we can find this deep sea that I've been hearing so much about. I want to get back down to the bottom, maybe find the mushroom biome. Oh, wow, there's like a fleet of... What? I've never seen multiples of those before. Are they social? See, this sort of thing is, like, fascinating to me. Like, I would love the the actual animals, like, they have in, like, Monster Hunter. I would love them to have their own, like, little routines and the things that they do, like, from day to day. Like, whether or not they're social, whether or not they hang out in little fleets or in little, like, schools or whatever it is. I don't think these are unfriendly, though. I'm not sure. They look fairly docile. I think that if they hurt you, it would probably be an accident because they don't appear to be that aggressive. He said as they turned around and lasered him with laser eyes. Like, oh my god, the lasers, they laser so laserly. They look like they have little pockets on the bottoms. Iridescent pockets. I don't know if that illumination would be for them to see with or what the theory is around this creature. But they look like little floating sea mushrooms. They definitely have like kind of like an agaricus bisperus thing going on. Cool. I like them. They're peaceful. They're fun to look at, and I feel much safer now that I'm inside of a ship that's as big as they are. I mean, they could probably still wreck up our shit if they really, really wanted to, but it's fascinating just to watch them. I love sea creatures. Love sea creatures, which is weird considering my terror of the deep ocean. I know. We're, we're getting down there. Hold on. All right, so let's level this thing out. Now that we got it leveled... Oh, I love how the lights go dark when you're in the deep sea. That's really, really cool how it gets, like, darker and darker, and you have to rely on, like, kind of like the iridescent, kind of fluorescent lighting that you have around, although I feel like it should be a little bit brighter. These lights are pretty bright. But either way, I would love for, like, certain areas to be dark until you walked into them. So, for example, when you walk into the engine room, the lights would go and turn on, and then when you leave, they would turn off. But these little, like, glowing bits on the sides, like the little underlit parts, in case we're trying to be all cool, like, Street Racer style would stay lit. Yeah. I like it. I like it a lot. A lot of cool ideas in this game that I think could be... Just used for, like, immersion alone. Oh, there's one of our... I don't think he wants to meet us right now. 
Please don't blow up my Seamoth. Alright, so we might have to go out. Our Seamoth's a little bit beat up right now. We may have to go out like, I was going to say on foot, but I guess on flip would be the way to go. On fleek. Let's see here. I'm going to see if I can zap this little prick. Did I get him? Okay. I got to clear out all these hostile monsters before we do anything else. Now, if he comes into the net, is it going to capture him? That's one thing that I'm not so sure of yet. Or does he have to be part of the initial explosion in order for it to count? Did we get him? I can't tell if he's dead yet because they haven't put the dead animations in on like half these mobs. If this works kind of like a faux shark net, I think I'd like it a little bit better where we could like protect ourselves with it. I'm going to try and keep myself charged up and ready to blast. Oh no, he's still alive. Is he? No, he's not because he's not being affected by the stasis net anymore. Alright. Oh man, we got the bugged out. Damn it. Our little thingy's bugged out. I like how he sort of like gangster holds it sideways when he goes into fight with him. Like as it charges up, he gets more and more sideways with it. I'm going to try and kill this stupid like... I don't even know what the hell this thing is. It's got big ass teeth though and it looks really, really unpleasant. Is it dead yet? Ow! Okay, so it can still bite me if I run into its mouth. So that explains a number of things that I didn't previously know. Just stay away from the mouth. See if I can keep him locked down for a second because we're almost out of oxygen. We'll go back to the ship, get myself some air, and then we'll come back out and see what we can explore here. Because obviously we got to find ourselves some magnesium, and I'm not sure exactly where the mushroom biome is over here, but we got to find it. So once we get inside, we'll get some air back. In fact, this is probably where I'm going to break off the episode. I've been trying to keep these short so that, like, we're not doing a whole lot in each episode. And because of that, I like to keep them a little bit shorter by a few minutes. Just in case so I don't overstay my welcome. It's my own paranoia. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Subnautica. We will come back in just a little bit. We'll look for the mushroom biome. Once we get that done, we're going to get our little repair thing to put together, I guess. We'll find the sea moth. We will fix it. In fact, there it is right there. Although I don't like the way that it precariously hangs over my head. That's nerve-wracking. I feel like it's going to fall at any second. Anyways, I'll see y'all later. Hi, do, everybody.